Hi there, my name is Daniel from Tutor Tutor. In this series of videos, I'll be showing you how to tackle some of the hardest physical animal questions that I've come across in past papers. Okay, so in this first question, we have a student that gives the following incorrect and incomplete definition of the moment of a force about a point. He says that the moment of a force around a point is equal to mass times distance, so we need to correct this definition. So in the diagram which I drew here, I have a pivot here, um, a beam here, and on that beam hangs a box of mass m. So according to our definition of moments, the weight of the box times by the distance from the pivot, x, should be equal to the moment. So let's write that down. One thing else that we need to consider is what happens if the box is actually at an angle. If there's a force acting at angle theta, then we need to consider a different component of distance. The component of distance that we consider is the perpendicular line connecting the force to the pivot. This is called the moment arm. So we would need to change our definition for moment to include this change. This changes the definition to moment equals the distance perpendicular from an axis to the line of action of a force times by the weight or force. So in other words, it would be this moment arm times by the force. The next question that I have is an example where a astronaut is playing golf on the surface of the moon. The initial velocity is 16 meters per second and is at an angle 40 degrees from the x-axis. The question asks us to calculate the horizontal and vertical components of velocity of the golf ball at the instant it was struck. If we first look at the horizontal component, which is this component here, then you can see that we have to take the cosine component. If we call the initial velocity u, we would say u times cos 40 is equal to the horizontal component. Then on the other hand, the vertical component, which is this part here, we would say that is u times the sine component, so sine 40, and that is equal to the vertical component. The horizontal component is equal to 12.26 meters per second, and the vertical component is equal to 10.28 meters per second. A good way to test this is correct is using Pythagoras. So the square root of 12.26 squared plus 10.28 squared should equal 16 meters per second. The second part wants us to describe the central difference between the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity. It is important to remember that both the horizontal and vertical components are completely independent from each other, so one doesn't affect the other. So for the horizontal component, there is no acceleration because there's no air resistance. However, for the vertical component, there is an acceleration. So on Earth, it'd be 9.81 meters per second squared, or on the moon, it would actually be lower than that because the moon's smaller than, than the Earth. So the vertical component, you would use Suvat equations in order to calculate either accelerations time. This next section, you need to use the Suvat equations in order to work out several quantities, including the total time of flight, the distance covered, to write out Suvat right at the top. So S is the total displacement, so this is the vertical displacement. U is the initial velocity, V is the final velocity, A is the vertical, vertical acceleration, and T is the total time of flight. So we only need three in order to work out the fourth. So we know U, we know A, and with some trickery we can know V. Bearing in mind that both U and V are the vertical components. So I've quickly done a small diagram here, showing the initial velocity, the angle at which the ball is fired, the maximum height of the flight, and the total horizontal distance of the flight. If we denote the initial vertical velocity as uy, then we can change this to uy. Now we can start putting in some of our quantities that we know. We know that the vertical components of the initial velocity is u cos 40. We know that acceleration is 1.6 meters squared, However, because we're looking at directions, and we say that downwards is negative, don't forget the negative, so it's negative 1.6. So it might seem that we don't know V, we don't know U, because we're looking for T, we don't know that either. Using a property of curved flight, we know that at the maximum vertical distance, then the velocity will be zero. We know that at the height of the flight, the vertical velocity will be zero. So at this point here, that vertical velocity would be zero. So the vertical final velocity will be zero. Now we can use our Suvat equations, vertical initial velocity, vertical final velocity, 
acceleration and time. This equation is v equals u plus at. So inputting some of our quantities that we know, we know that v equals 0, so it'll be 0 equals u cos 40 minus 1.6t, not forgetting the negative here. This simplifies to 0 equals 10.3 minus 1.6t, and this rearranges to t equals 6.4 seconds. However, initially you might think this is the end of that part of the question, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So what we've done, we've worked out the time it takes for the golf ball to go from here to here. But this is only halfway through the journey. Because it's symmetrical, we assume that it takes an identical path down this way. So the actual answer would be t equals 6.4 times 2. Therefore, the answer is t equals 12.8 seconds. So that last part was probably the hardest part of the whole question. So once you got that out of the way, then the rest of it should be quite straightforward. This part wants us to find out the horizontal distance the ball travels. So in this case, we actually just use the horizontal velocity is equal is equal to the horizontal distance divided by the time of flight. This just rearranges to the horizontal distance is equal to 12.8 times by u cos 40. That's equal to 157 meters. This next question asks us to find the maximum height reached, which in this diagram is just this line here. Because we're dealing with vertical height here, we need to use two best equations. We know the vertical initial velocity, we know the vertical final velocity, and we know the acceleration. We know the time it takes for the ball to get to the maximum height, so for the ball to get here. So now, because we know four quantities, we can use any Suvat equation. So I'm going to use the equation s equals ut plus half at squared. So all you need to do is simply input in these values and then calculate that s is equal to 33.2 meters. The last part of the question says a simple golf shot is played on earth. Give two reasons why your answer to B part 3 would be different. So B part 3 being this one. So the two reasons why it would be different would be first, that on the Earth, the acceleration is very different. Because the Earth is a lot larger in mass, our acceleration downwards is a lot greater. So on the Moon it's minus 1.6, on Earth it's minus 9.81. Finally, on the Moon there's no air, so there can't be any air resistance. However on Earth, because we have an atmosphere, there will be air resistance. I've just written those two points down here. Great, so that finishes this lesson. In the next video that I make, I'll be covering topics such as oscillations, waves and particles. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found that video useful. If you'd like to watch more of our videos, just click the subscribe button here. Also, if you'd like to click the link down below, you can find out more about our one-on-one -on -one tutoring that we provide at Tutor.